we're going to take a look at the Tarrasch variation of the French defense. So the French defense is e4, e6, and the point of that move is to support a pawn push to d5 to attack white's e4 pawn. So play typically goes d4, d5, and black is threatening to win a pawn. So there are four moves that a grandmaster would consider in this position. Uh, one of them is to save the pawn by advancing it. That's called the advance variation. And it's a good move because it creates a lot of space. There are a lot of squares behind the central pawns here. And it cramps black. It fixes the pawn on e6. It traps the light squared bishop in. It takes away this f6 square from the knight. It even takes away the d6 square from the bishop. So because of that, black needs to um, relieve his cramped position by chipping away at this pawn chain that white has in the center. And so almost universally, black will play c5, and that threatens to win that base of the pawn chain on d4. And if d4 falls, then e5 will become weak. Uh, so because of that, uh, white will play c3 to support d4 with a pawn. So if black ever captures on d4, white can recapture with his c-pawn and maintain the base of his pawn chain. All right, backing up here, another move is to exchange pawns on d5. That's called the exchange variation. And there are a lot of ways to play it, but one exciting way to play it is to push c4 here. And this means that the c-pawn and the d5-pawn are eventually going to trade and white will be left with an isolated queen's pawn position. For example, uh, black might play knight f6, knight c3, bishop e7, uh, let's say knight f3, castles, bishop d3, all sensible developing moves. And by the way, as soon as that bishop on f1 moves into position here, that's a good time to take that c-pawn because then the bishop will recapture and white will have used two tempi in moving that bishop to c4. So black gains a tempo. All right, and this isolated queen's pawn is double-edged. It's a weak pawn. It can be attacked and even captured, but it does leave a lot of space around it. There are some open files here that white can use, and there are a lot of, a lot of squares that uh, white can use to even launch an attack on the castle black king. Uh, for example, white might place a knight on e5. All right, so going back to this standard position here, another move that white can make is to protect his e4 pawn. And you can do that with either knight to c3 or knight to d2. And uh, a, another move that I sometimes see uh, lower rated players play is bishop to d3. That looks like it defends the pawn too. Um, it's not a terrible move, but I don't think a grandmaster would ever play it because then black can capture here and trade on e4 and gain a tempo on that bishop. And white really doesn't want to trade his bishop for a knight. So probably you'll never see that played by a grandmaster. So instead the knight will be developed. And I think the more, more popular square is to develop the knight onto c3. Um, it's more active there than it is on d2 because it influences two central squares here. And now uh, black has a few standard moves to choose from. We looked at this move d takes e4 in another video. This is called the Rubenstein variation. If you want to take a, a look at our French defense playlist, you can find that video. Um, but another interesting move black can play is bishop to b4, and this is called the winnower variation. That pins the knight and then re-threatens that pawn on e4. And it's a dangerous opening. It's sort of like the Sicilian defense of the French defense. And what I mean by that is it creates an unbalanced position, and both sides can attack and possibly get a winning position. So it's a very fighting uh, aggressive opening for black. So because of that, some players will avoid the winnower and play knight to d2. And this is the Tarash variation. Okay, so
The point of the Tarash variation, again, is to avoid getting your knight pinned um, and to leave the C pawn mobile in case you want to move it forward. But also, it's kind of a delaying move. You're waiting for black to make a move, and you'll respond accordingly. You haven't committed your pawn yet. You haven't advanced it. You haven't uh, exchanged it. So that's another point of this Tarash variation. All right, I think there are three very common moves in this position. Let's take a look at them one at a time. Uh, a sensible move black can make here is c5, attacking that center pawn. Uh, that's, a, that's a very key move in many variations of the French defense is this move c5. Okay, so if black plays that move, this is called uh, the open system of the Tarash variation. It's called open because a lot of the pawns in the center will be exchanged and the position will become open. Okay, so what should white do about this? There is a threat on the d4 pawn. Well, there are two reasonable ways to defend it. You could defend it with c3. Um, but I don't think I would play that because it gives black the option of exchanging pawns on d4 and then exchanging pawns on e4 and leaving white with an isolated queen's pawn. And you can play that position if you want to, but I think I would go for more as white. So I don't like to guard with c3. Another way you could defend d4 is with knight from g to f3. But I don't really like that either. If black captures on d4 and you recapture with the knight, then black has a couple of good plans here. He can liquidate the center entirely, and it looks like he's falling a little bit behind in development, but it turns out he's doing okay. He can catch up in development, castle king side, and he has one central pawn here, and white has none. So I think black is doing fine. Um, but if I were black in this position, I'd probably play knight to c6. And that threatens the knight on d4, and black is attempting to simplify the position. Um, and play could continue, for example, bishop to b5 pinning the knight, so the knight on d4 can't be taken. Bishop to d7 to unpin it. Then maybe capture with the knight. You don't want to give up the bishop pair, so you capture with the knight. Um, B takes C6 is a great move, uh, capturing toward the center, getting another pawn to support your center, uh, and then maybe the bishop retreats to D3 to support that pawn. But black is doing fine here. Um, it does look like that might be a bad bishop behind this chain of light squared pawns, but it's not because those pawns are not fixed. They're mobile. They can move easily, and that bishop can get into the game. All right, so I don't particularly, particularly like those positions um, as white if I'm striving for an opening advantage. They're not bad. They look pretty equal to me. So I like to opt for a third move in this position. So the third move that is an option here besides guarding d4 with c3 or knight gf3 is to not guard it at all and take the pawn on d5. And that's probably what I would prefer as white. And now black has an option. He can recapture the pawn with the queen or with the pawn. And we'll look at each. But before we do, I wanted to mention that it's a mistake to capture the pawn on d4 there. And the reason is you don't want to leave that pawn on d5 for even a single move, because bishop to b5 check is coming, and that pawn is guarding c6, so you don't have knight to c6, so you're going to have to block the check on the d7 square. Uh, for example, bishop to d7. If that's played, white can temporarily sacrifice his bishop on b5, which is undefended, and take the pawn on e6, and that's due to a tactic. Um, if black takes the bishop, you can take on f7 with check, and if the king takes the pawn, then queen to h5 forks the king and the bishop, and we get the piece back. And white's doing great. Okay, so um, instead, um, 
of uh, taking the bishop uh, after d takes e6, black might try to take the pawn back okay, and restore the material. But then still, queen to h5 check is good, uh, g6 blocks, and then queen to e5. And that's a fork. It threatens the pawn and the rook. Okay. Pawn is threatened because the bishop is pinned. So what should black do here? Well, it's funny. The engine actually recommends knight to f6, which just gives up this e6 pawn. And I think white is doing well. It says white's doing well no matter what black does. But if I were black, I would play queen to f6. I mean, why not? You want to you want to put something on f6 because you have to block uh, access to that rook in the corner. You can't lose your rook. So why not play queen to f6, which guards that pawn? Well, it turns out white gets very quick development and um, has, a, has a great position anyway. And I don't want to get into all the tactical details since that's not the main point of this opening and since this move c takes d4 is a mistake anyway so let's go back to this position where white has just captured on d5 so black really should recapture on d5 and there's two ways to do it first let's look at uh, pawn takes d5 well that's fine but if you do that then that means you're willing to play an isolated queen's pawn position so this time it's black that gets an isolated queen's pawn because these pawns on d4 and c5 eventually will get exchanged. Uh, for example, white can play knight f3 here, knight gf3, uh, maybe knight to c6, um, maybe bishop b5 to pin the knight looks good. And then if this bishop comes out now or very soon, whenever it moves, then that's the great time to take that pawn on c5. Remember, because you're gaining a tempo, making that bishop move twice to capture that pawn. And then you can play from here against the isolated queen's pawn. Okay, so backing up, what if black takes with a queen? Which is not such a bad move because white doesn't immediately gain a tempo on the queen. He doesn't have knight to c3. He's already committed his knight. Um, but white does see that bishop to c4 would gain a tempo on the queen, uh, supported by the knight, but unfortunately that runs into queen takes d4. So white should prepare that by playing knight gf3 to support the d4 pawn. And now black probably should take that pawn while he can, and then white gains a tempo. Uh, most players drop the queen back to d6, um, and I don't think trying to gain another tempo here with knight to e4 is a good idea because of queen to b4 check. So instead, just castle. And if you look at the, the difference in development here, it's quite stark. White has already castled and brought out three minor pieces, and black has just brought out his queen. Um, so white has not recovered his pawn. Black is up a pawn, but the development lead is huge. Um, however, uh, white is going to be spending some time moving this knight and recovering the pawn, and black can catch up, so it's really sort of an illusion. I think black is fine in this position. Uh, for example, uh, knight c6 to further defend d4 and develop a piece, protect that diagonal, good move. But then knight to b3, and now there are three attackers on that pawn and it cannot be defended. Don't try to defend it by pushing your e-pawn because white will just snatch it up. Uh, and then you can't take with the queen because your queen will be pinned and you'll lose your queen. So I suppose you could take with the knight, um, but I think you're gonna get into trouble with rook to e1 anyway with a threat of f4. All right, so the pawn really should not be defended. You should just develop your king side here, uh, take that pawn. Black can trade knights to simplify, and if I were white, I would try to keep the queens on the board, and I would retake with the knight here. And now the lead in development isn't so great anymore. There are two minor pieces out, and we've got a knight and a queen out, although white is already castled, so white does have an edge in development but black will get castled very soon anyway. 
and that bishop will be developed easily, probably in, in a fianchetto uh, fashion. So black is doing fine. Okay, so that is the open system of the Tarash, where you play c5 against this Tarash move, knight d2. And if I were white, I would uh, uh, not defend the pawn on d4, I would take the pawn on d5. Okay, so what's another move? Well, another popular move here in the Tarash is to play knight f6, which further attacks that pawn on e4. And this is called the closed variation. And it's called closed because here white has nothing better than to push the pawn and lock up and close the position off. Okay, so white gains space like in the advanced variation we looked at earlier and gains a tempo on the knight, which will retreat to d7. All right, and now white has two different moves he can play. You can play f4 to support your center. Um, because I think f6 is going to eventually be played, and you'd like to recapture on e5 with a pawn. But I don't personally like the positions that arise after f4, because white ends up pushing a lot of pawns in that line and doesn't get developed as nicely. Um, so I would play bishop d3 and start to concentrate on developing my pieces. After bishop d3, black can start to attack the pawn chain at its base, and just like in the advanced variation, you want to play c3 to protect it. Okay, and then knight to c6 attacks it for a second time. There are two attackers on that pawn, and the best way to uh, protect that pawn is with knight to e2, not knight to f3, because this knight is actually going to f3. That queen's knight is eyeing that f3 square. That's the natural post for that knight to get out of the way of this bishop. So you want to play this knight to e2 to guard that pawn. Okay, and uh, play can proceed from there. For example, um, maybe bishop e7, castles, castles, and so forth. Or I suppose... Um, Another uh, possibility here is black could, instead of bishop e7, he could capture on d4 and then immediately play f6 and start attacking the front of the pawn chain since he can't attack the base anymore. Now, if black does do that, I just wanted to mention be careful of supporting your center with the move f4. That would be a mistake here. You really should just... Uh, capture this pawn and play this position here. You do have a weak D pawn, but black has a weak backward E pawn and the square in front of it is weak as well. Nice hole in his position. So it's about an even position. Um, so don't play um, against F6. Be careful of this move F4 in some positions. And here's why. It's because black can uh, exchange on E5 and then take the d4 pawn and you you're not going to win that knight because if you take the knight black's going to recover the knight with this check forking king and knight and so black will go up a pawn in that variation all right so that's the closed system it's similar to the advanced variation um, the only other move that is ever played right here by black is the very interesting move bishop to e7. And that's called the Morozovic variation. Okay, and I think the point of that move is to kind of delay committing to anything and pass the ball back to white. Okay, so if you put the knight on f6, then you're pretty much begging white to lock up the center, and then your path is clear. If you play c5, you're pretty much asking white to clarify the position in the center by exchanging on d5. So here you're giving the move back to white again. And um, it could transpose, though. For example, you could play bishop to d3, and then maybe knight to f6, and then you push the pawn, and the knight moves, and you have a position that's like the closed variation again. 
All right, so I won't go into that bishop to e7 and any independent lines. You can look at that if you want to. Um, that's all I have to say about this Tarash variation. Thanks for watching the video.